chuck it yes! in! Burnley lead! What a finish from Chris Ward! See, Marwich, the ball is good, and the goal is good! New Zealand incredibly! Winston Reid is the man! And with him lead for the second time tonight! Hey everyone, welcome back to the Phones Podcast. I'm Toby here with Nick and Noah, with Davis L and Teo coming in later. And here's your January roundup of Kiwi football. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Phones Podcast for the latest updates. If you okay. had to shake uh, one person on the All Whites team, who would it be and why? Tim Payne. <laughs> Tim Payne, why? I could, he looks like Hectic like TKS hectic. on Twitch. <laughs> Um, uh, if you don't Chris it. Wood, Chris Wood, and then hope for a marriage and divorce. Get that yeah, money. He's got that Newcastle money. Get that bag, bro. <laughs> what if he makes he his own Newcastle up? money? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, Chris Wood, Newcastle. What are we thinking so far? Uh, I think he's gonna get exposed. Heavily. I think so too. I don't think he's anywhere near good enough for the level. Uh, I think I think Chris Wood's a good player. I don't think he's good enough to play for an upcoming team like Newcastle with the money they've got. I'm not sure why they went in for him. Him for Burnley was was good because of the way they played. I can't see him getting above 10 this year. Newcastle yeah. don't play false nine like... Well, he was kind of like false nine kind he of would- target man. Yeah. Was playing a false nine, they had like a second striker, so they just yeah. did the classic big man, little man. Yeah. And realistically, I don't see Chris Wood getting any game time for Newcastle once Wilson's back. Oh, oh I do. I, I do. do. I, I do. I do. You don't. You don't sign somebody for like twenty odd mil and then not and then, play them. Well, I, I mean, like the main game reason. Game. You're not wrong, but that's true. United. Not and like Jane Sancho at the start. Yeah, Jane Sancho mm-hmm. at the start of the season. Um. It's, well, it's an interesting proposition. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we want, like, as New Zealanders, right, as Kiwis, we want Chris Wood to do well. You've got to be realistic with something like this, though. Yeah. He's got people like Trippier around him. They just signed Bruno Guimardus. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And with players like that coming through, that's going to stick out like a sort of It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I he's... If he's not scoring when he's got trips, no, nah, Saint Maximin. Yeah. And then just, I guarantee they'll sign someone else before the window's over as well. It'll be interesting uh, to see what he does with the service. I think that's the most important mm-hmm. thing. If he if he's getting the service, because we haven't really seen Chris Wood in a very position heavy, lots of chances type of team. We've seen him in recent years playing for Burnley and New Zealand, which are obviously not the best teams in the world if we're looking at Newcastle having all these great signings it could be a bit of a revelation if he's if he gets on his finishing back I but he still misses 20 big chances a season at Burnley yeah it's like mm. it'll be it'll be interesting yeah definitely but I'm not I'm not very confident but I also am a serial doubter Pessimist. Prove the right. Yeah. Fair enough. No, I I have bad feelings about this as well because it's awesome and really exciting that he's gone there. Yeah. But the performances need to speak. Yeah. But I I saw uh, a stat. Uh, one of my mates sent me in a Burnley group chat. Um, it was he's got 158 offsides and 157 appearances. Jesus. Wow. I get he plays off the shoulder, but still. And with a fast counter-attacking team like Newcastle, if that comes through. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> so, Chris Wood in his past two games, he's got a 6.0 rating and a 6.9. No goals, no assists, nothing. Mm, that makes sense. It's... Mm. Yeah. I hope I hope he finds form. I hope he picks up picks up like a little little patch of patch of form, but yeah, I'm. I'm not seeing him as the as the new revelationary striker that they need. I'm not seeing him as Newcastle's Aguero. That's for sure. Because that when you when you get a takeover like that, it's, that's the expectation. 
like yeah when, when you like think of Chris Wood he's like you think he's like a decent striker which he is but like if you think that when you look back at his score sheet he hasn't scored since Crystal Palace in November and yeah. that's been like something like six seven matches where he's just done absolutely nothing and then you I mean to be fair he was playing in Burnley like they don't score many goals as it is I get and that you can't... he plays for Burnley but like mm. it's just like if he's not scoring in like six or seven matches it, do they really well does he really deserve to like have a move like this Oh, like, the main, not for maybe maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but like I don't, I don't really think he was worth twenty mil. Like what Newcastle paid for him. Like right now his market value is like six point two million euros or something. Yeah, yeah. players always go for above their market value. Yeah, that's that's the point. It's yeah. inflated. Like it's it's always going to be inflated. It's, but I think I think it's less about the move in terms of the money that they paid, and more about the move in terms of. The club and the situation that the club he's gone to is actually in. Yeah. Does he deserve that kind of opportunity? And for me, the answer is no. I can't remember a time where Chris Wood has lit up that Burnley side and actually made them a better overall team. He's finished some chances, but I can't see him doing. I never saw him do for Burnley what St. Maxman does for Newcastle. That's the best way to put it. Um, yeah. Hat trick against Wolves. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that. That period, that purple patch at the end of last season, which kept Burnley up. Yeah, but... He, he really, he's carried them for the last three seasons. Four he seasons. He hasn't, though. He has. He's been he's... their top scorer every season, and it's not close. Yeah, but it is Burnley, and it's always been a relegation fight. Like, when you think about carrying, you think about you think about a team performing well. I Burnley have never been consistently good performers. Uh, to be fair, they... Their old owner was, you know, an idiot. They did make Europe in their first season in the Premier League. Which is still weird to think about. I just... Their owner is... Or owner was just completely... Just shambolic. And derailed the club. And, mm-hmm. you know, they could go down. And they probably will go down. Considering... Um, good riddance. They play one of the most ugly styles of football in the Premier League. <laughs> to be fair... It's it's not a not a good watch. <laughs> I prefer to watch United than that, and I'm a United fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was so that excited changes. at the start of the season to watch Manchester United, and oh my god, we're gonna have Sancho and Ronaldo that Sancho link up. No, nope. no, nope. nope. <laughs> we're gonna have Timothy we're gonna have Varane. a fucking nah. To be fair, to be fair, Varane has been incredible. Yeah, you see how Varane. <laughs> He's been he's been one of our best players week in week out. Oh, to be fair though, it's not very hard to do at the current state that Manchester. It's really so. not. I mean, we asked can... about Fred and fucking McTominay with Greenwood on the right with Ronaldo up top, and those two have their own little club beef going on. Chris Wood is the most expensive Premier League transfer over the age of thirty. Yeah, I'm not. That is that. that is a mental stat. I don't like that stat. I don't either. Oh, there's so much expectation on him. Okay, well, we've talked enough about that, I reckon. Uh, what's the next question? Next question. Uh, does Marco Rojas get into yes. the white squad? Yes. Yes? <clears throat> yes. 100% um, yes. yes. He's, what? Because Maybe realistically... in the A-League? You're, you're talking about him versus Champness, right? Champness is exciting, but as we talked about before, I don't think that Champness is going to be anywhere near committed enough to play for the team as Rojas is. That's a fair point in my opinion. I think I think yeah, I think, I think Rojas Rojas being in the squad will do will do great for us because we need players on the wing that can get a delivery in the box well. I don't know if Champness can do that as much as he can beat his defender. He needs to be around the squad though, hundred and ten percent. What Champness? Yeah, because no, he yeah. does have the potential to be that guy for us. He does, but potential means nothing without motivation. 100%. You don't take a year off for rapping if you're serious about football. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're that techie, obviously, he's basically Ronaldo. Fucking box office coming out. He's an elite footballer, man. What are you talking about? He's insane. He, he is a great footballer, but 
not a great rapper. I don't know, man. Wedding photos slapped. <laughs> Box office is alright as well. Have you seen the music video on YouTube? N- no, no. It's just, it's just a video of him sitting with a whole bunch of girls' eyes. <laughs> oh, is that the uh, one when they're in that like mansion? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Got me feeling like I'm in the box office. Nobody can stop this. And he's just sitting next to the holiday girls. Go boys. on, Joey Champness, you <laughs> gunman. <laughs> Absolute I mean, skin, man. He's a very exciting player. He he kind of reminds me of Rojas when he was at the Phoenix episode. Oh, I don't even want to talk about Marco Rojas. It makes me so sad that his career just didn't oh, I work. Know. I know. He was so good at the Phoenix. He was our best player, like, by a mile. I personally blame Stuttgart, uh, that is Matthias' team. Uh, they stunted his growth and ruined his career. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with that. <laughs> I mean, Marco Rojas shouldn't have gone for a move like that. The same thing that concerns me with Champness also concerns me with Singh. Yeah, they've both got that natural ability. But in- both got Singh- the natural ability. But Singh, when he first went... His mind was not on football. You could see it from his Instagram and everything. His mind was, oh, let me take selfies with Lewandowski and Muller. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're in a place like that, you want to be learning from those guys. You want to be working your ass off on the pitch. I remember him playing in the preseason friendlies, right, for Bayern. And I remember thinking that he looked decent, but he looked out of place. He looked he looked like he had a lot of work to do, obviously. I mean, he's a young player at Bayern Munich, right? I think he missed he missed a pretty good goal scoring opportunity in one of those games, didn't he? I don't know. All I know is he got very unlucky because there was that um oh, I can't remember his name. He's a young Cam. Uh, he he chose allegiance to Germany, but he was also English. Um, oh, in place of Bayern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if that guy didn't come up at Bayern, I feel like he would definitely have more chances. But you're not stunting that kid's growth for Sopret Yeah, you're not. Does Musiala play down the middle? He does. Uh, I think what Bayern will do is they probably will sell him this season just because he's having his breakout season now with 13 goal contributions in 19 matches this season. I think that could be good. I think that could be good for people wanting to buy him. Like, we might get a team that's more like, I want to use him rather than have him. As a loan. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Who, Who does he go to though? That's the question. Yeah. Is it a Bundesliga move, or does he go to the Netherlands and play for like a PSV or uh, Ajax? I like, mean, previously I mean, on the podcast we've been talking about if he could like just get bought by Regensburg since he's having not a bad season now. I think they're they're eighth at the moment, and they could maybe. I mean, they were like first for like the first few games they played, and. It was actually looking like he could hit the Bundesliga. Uh, Jan Riesenberg already come out and said that they will not be buying him because they can't afford him um, wow. on their uh, English-speaking account. Which, which is obviously just a fan. I think I think Sarpreet Singh can do better in terms of a role-playing position beyond Ransberg. Obviously, he's not going to be a starter for a Bundesliga club yet, but I think he could come off the bench for a Bundesliga club and actually be in the squad and train with them, and I think that'd be better for his development. I mean, he could be. If St. Pauli go up, which are the current leaders of that league, yeah. he could. they could sign him and he could start for them easy. St. Pauli I reckon second. he'd ball out for a start though, or something. Yeah, I was thinking like Stuttgart or like just a team that... But I say start <laughs> Yeah, you, you did. <laughs> no, start I, I think he could play for like a moderate or like small franchise in the first league and do quite well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I think Germany's definitely the place he should stay. Or get him, get him to France or uh, the Netherlands because I don't think he's got the, I don't think he's got the physicality to ever play in the prem personally. Um, I mean, he's been hitting the gym. He looks bigger. Yeah, but everything he's, he was he was a I mean, Bayern player. He was contracted Bayern. They're all massive now. They're all in the yeah, roids. So very true. The first thing oh, that- Bayern looked at when he came over was getting his physicality up. Because he was like yeah. a teenager. To be fair, he was training with the first team for a while, and then he just had that fail loan at, um, was it Nuremberg? Nuremberg. Yeah, Nuremberg. Yeah, where he lasted like six months or less. But to be fair, it's hard, because I don't know if he speaks much German, and those sorts <laughs> of people will probably not speak the best of English. Those sorts of people? What are you trying to say, man? I'm trying to say that <laughs> they've got no real reason to learn English, even though they learn it at schools from a young age. 
I mean, if the problem is, right, if he goes to a France or a Netherlands, like, is, is he starting for, like, a top five Eredivisie club? Probably. Yes. You reckon? I think he could. Yeah, I reckon. Because Ryan Thomas went over there. Ryan Thomas was starting for PSV until he, he got was, injured. He was starting for PSV, and he was also starting for... What was the other team he played for? I can't remember, but I can remember the badge. So, uh, something. Like that. I'm not sure. He started for his previous Eredivisie club as well, right? So it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see where he goes and what he does. But I can see him staying in Germany. I, I wouldn't complain of that, mate. Do you guys think Ryan Thomas is gonna be back for the World Cup? Yeah. Yes. Do you? He's been injured for so much longer than I thought he would be. Exactly. Can't be injured up to the World Cup, surely. But it's then again finding form because I'm like I've I was talking to some PSV fans on the on the Twitter, uh, which is probably not the best thing to do because you know, <laughs> I've had death threats from Viking fans for saying Joe Bell's <laughs> after in their club. Um, but there's also some very nice Viking fans. Uh, they they do a podcast also, which is really helpful, and they always do reply in English, which is sick. Um, so big up them guys. Uh, I do think. That Ryan Thomas, like he was phenomenal for us in those Mexico games. Mm. Um, yeah, he was. He was mental. But I think he's fallen out of favour at PSV, um, from what I've heard. Their new, I think they've got a German manager and they've got Mario Goetz and all that, and they just, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. That, you know? He's also being uh, outshined by uh, the Ivorian Sangare, who's doing really well this season. And uh, Van Ginkel. Van Ginkel is quite Ginkel. average, though. But yeah, he's, but he's playing. That's the yeah. important thing. You're always gonna you're always gonna be out of favour if you're not playing games. As soon as you come back in, all they're gonna be focused about is getting his fitness and getting him training again. Because I don't think he's gonna be back in that PSV starting eleven or even significant minutes off the bench up to the World Cup. But I think he'll be ready. I think he'll he'll have trained and he'll be in the team. And I think he still makes the NZ team. Oh, obviously, like. The- Ryan Thomas Joe Bell Pivot is gonna be vile and I cannot wait. It will be. What's your what's your starting what's your starting eleven for the like fully fit yeah. fully fit eleven? Fully um, fit, no COVID restrictions. Uh Marinovic and Go. Um mm-hmm. Reed uh Boxel. That's a, that's a that's a risky one or Tulayama or whatever the fuck his name is. I can never Tula pronounce Yama. it. Yeah. Um Libby and then Right back's open, man. To it alone, he can play on the right. No, he was poor. He was poor on the right <laughs> against Jordan, man. He's okay. He he's has not... played on the right, not that he can. <laughs> like he, he didn't get up and down, and I think that was a big reason why Logan Rogerson was so out of the game is because Bill wasn't going up and down, up and down like a right back should be. Yeah, I I do agree with that. But if you if you're looking at right backs in New Zealand, we got him, Fenton, Callan, Elliott. Callan Elliott's not that bad. Yeah. He just, you know, know, sometimes is a bit risky in the box, which I do not he's like. He's 50-50. He's not, he's not a player that performs week in, week out, but he can have a good game. Remember when he started playing for the Phoenix, how good he was? Yeah, it's... Yeah. I think his move to Greece just completely derailed his career because, like, the owner of the club... His, the owner of his club was, like, a underworld, dark, evil man, money man <laughs> who was, like, on the run from the authorities. <laughs> Something Is like that. True? I don't know if someone was just trolling in the group chat, but someone was talking about that. <laughs> I think they and might I'll... be trolling. I doubt, I doubt the owner of the nah, club. Nah, man. It's a, like, it... realistically, how much is a club in Greece going to cost? I don't even think it was first division. It might have yeah, been. You know, Not that right. much, right? You know? Well, a little bit Xanthi, of... Xanthi was a weird move. It was... I didn't really understand it at the time because it only played like three games for the Phoenix, right? Well, I, I mean, don't know how you can get charts in Europe after playing that little for the... For the I mean, Penn Wayne didn't play that much, and he got offers from what Coventry? Coventry City, yeah. But he did play a decent bit. He played more than Cullen. Cullen played like the last three, four games of the season, and then moved. Yeah, I don't know. But to be I fair, mean, in saying that, Matthew Garber didn't play any Phoenix uh, stuff, and then he moved to Sweden, and then he moved to Torino. Matthew Garber was never in the Phoenix. Yeah, he was. He went from Ole. What they do often. At that academy, they don't look. They they talk a lot of shit about the Phoenix. First of all, I've, <laughs> I've heard that firsthand. They don't like the Phoenix at all. Um, but they move players on for trials. That's how uh, I think. That's how Garbert and Staminich got their respective moves. I think Garbert was kind of just one of those players. He played NZ footy, had the connections, which is the important part, and got a trial and played well. And then that's what happened from there. Because yeah, uh, he's is he dual citizenship. Uh... English, or he was born in England or something. I yeah, don't know if that's yeah, yeah. true. 
No, it is. It is. It's the same with well. There was another. There was another English bloke who is in the MLS now who has actually declared for England. I think he's not. He's not in the NZ ranks. Uh, his name is similar to a DJ, Calvin Harris. Have you heard of him? Uh, yes, I believe so. Actually, he imagine played, declaring for England. I know he played for um. He played for Scots and the Phoenix Academy for a while. Yeah, I and think I've built... actually met him before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played with him or against him at uh, Futsal Nets. And he he was one of the best players I've played against. He went to the US, did a scholarship kind of thing for Wake Forest, then went into the MLS Super Draft, which is like the NBA draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Footballers. And he got like, I think he was second choice. Jeepers. To FC Cincinnati, and he has not done very much at all so far. So what did we think about Wood's performance against Jordan? I think the team against Jordan didn't play the best, but the standout was Vowed. He was... He was an elementary school keeper. Like I, get, I, saw, like I posted about it on Twitter saying how I never want to see him in an all-white shoes again. That was probably a bit reactionary because I, I was no. fucking fuming. Bro, I don't either. You reckon we want him over Sale, Paulson, Marinovic? No, never. Right, bring me back Mark motherfucking Passon. He would never. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Passon would never. Mark Passon would never. That save against Bahrain, bro. Oh, that penalty so much. Bahrain. Oh. Bro, oh, I remember like young, like, like seven, six-year-old me, or however old I was, be like, yeah, celebrating with this drunk fucker in front of me. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I really, I really wish we didn't go to that World Cup because I would not be so dependent on football if that wasn't the case. Because that, oh, that World Cup is when I fell in love with football. Yeah, sadly, that's fair enough. I mean, that was pretty miraculous. The fact that we didn't lose a game, we drew all three. Like, I, I don't know how we managed that. The only thing I don't like about that is that it's just us standing for mediocrity because we didn't actually also win a game. I mean, I get what you mean. Mentality needs to be, if you want to be the best, you got to act like you're the best, you got to play like you're the best, you got to train like you're the best. But we are NZ. It was our second World Cup. We're playing against some of the world's best. We played against Italy, the former World, Cup, the World Cup Yep. And you can't expect too much. I don't think... I don't think not losing a game and getting three points of the World Cup is necessarily going for mediocrity. I'd say it's more having a very well-achieved realistic goal because we'd never gotten a point before that. I do think we should have won that Italy game. Uh, I was watching highlights of it because, you, know, you know, if I'm in my feelings, I was watching the Zealand football club. <laughs> um, my go-to is Chris Wood's 50 goals for Burnley. And then uh, the World Cup game against Italy. The but goal that's been. So shit house, man. Yep. Now we're going to switch it up, and now introducing Teo into the podcast. Hello, Teo. How's it? Uh, we might as well get into the latest of news in Kiwi football. Last minute deal says Bromby signed Joe Bell as he moves from Stavanger in Norway to Denmark, and finally Kachi gets his move to the Serie A with Empoli, where he completes his dream move of moving to top tier football in Italy. What are your thoughts on these moves, Teo? Um, well, obviously, Kakacha, only 20, 21 years old, yep. moving to uh, Serie A, absolute huge. Um, and we're just going to look at Empoli's last five games. They like to play a four at the back, where St. Trudin usually play at five at the back. Um, their current fullbacks Empoli have, they've got, I think, maybe like five. Four that are on loan or injured, and one that is actually still available. So I think Empoli are desperately needing a fullback and a stronger defence as well because they've conceded 16 goals in their last five games. So I believe that Empoli are working. I think they've signed a couple of centre-backs. So I wonder if... I think Kakache will be starting in that team. But uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how he plays in the Serie A. Because I do like the thought of him playing in the Serie A, but... It's also his kind of play style is like kind of wing back formation, like he likes to get forward. But he's also yeah, yeah. he's also quite defensive in his own respect. But it's an interesting move. Can't wait to see him on TV with the Serie A. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Against uh, Chiesa, Chiesa will be coming up against him in the right wing. That's not going to be. A, that's a big place, of course. But yeah. looking forward to that. And Joe Bell moves from Norway. What we yeah, think? so I, I haven't actually uh, researched that much of Joe Bell, but I think what I know, uh, Brondby, I don't know how to pronounce Brondby. it, but their, 
yeah, Bromby, their third place in the Danish uh, league. So very it's team. it's a yeah, it's a very strong team. So I'm not sure if he'll start in that. I think he might, but I don't know how the players are and stuff. But yeah, so I'm not the best at that kind of stuff. But um, yep. yeah, it's a good move. I'm also wondering um, how the Champions League like qualification works in Denmark because I think Bromby yeah. have the potential to play maybe Champions League, maybe Europa League. Yeah, I'm not sure how it works. So it'd be kind of um, nice to see him like appearing on like somewhere where we watch at home, just watching the yeah. UCL Europa League, and we just see yeah. our own. I think um, that if if Bromby do qualify somehow for the UCL I think it'd be awesome to see like the likes of Kakache and um, Joe Bell on one of the most watched uh, televised leagues I don't think Kakache is going to make UCL but it's going to be yeah true it's it's sad but he's also I think it's the right platform he needs to be at he's not at a like a huge giant club who's not going to use him because he's Hmm. The best thing about teams like Empoli is that they're good for like developing players like into like a good league. Yeah. Not saying Empoli are bad, but like hmm. they're not winning. Let's be honest, they're not winning against Juventus and Roma uh, and like giants like that consistently. Uh, but it's like they can. Yeah. It's kind of like same situation with Jean Regensburg, where it just gives them like kind of this platform to perform well and maybe they make like a better offer into the future and like just race their careers a bit because I do think mm. Kikachi needed this move from St. Truden. Yeah definitely and and it is only a loan but I'm pretty sure there is a low uh, option to buy so depending on how well he does uh, we could see him with a, an actual contract there. Sadly, neither the Phoenix or the All Whites can make an impact in their respective matches. All Whites deservedly losing 3-1 to Jordan and the Phoenix ending the FFA Cup run 4-1 against the Melbourne victory. What do you think of such a poor match from our national team? And what do you think about the Phoenix's loss? Well, the Phoenix, well, it was terrible. I mean, we started off really well and against the top side like Melbourne Victory, we were doing very well, but the last 10 minutes, we conceded three goals and it just all crumbled up. Yeah, I wasn't too keen on that press that we gave in the final 10 minutes. I mean, we were yeah. down 2-1, two, two I believe, and we just yeah. sort of let the defense slip because we were desperate to just gain a goal or something to take it to pens in extra time. I think we yeah. played a really good game, but like, it just wasn't rewarded. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of sad because we we're on such a roll and we and there were high prospects even though we didn't have the team we had last year or or for like many years. So yeah, true. And the the whole FFA Cup run was it was very cool because we hadn't made it past the round of sixteen in heaps of years. I think maybe and, even never. And then we made it to the semis. That was the semis, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the semis. Okay, and Almost now. Yeah. Now we talk about the Jordan game. That right. that was just poor from us. Oh, us. it was dis it was so disappointing. I mean, um, Wood he scored a goal, but it was a penalty. His shot was off. It was, it yeah. was just. It was just, so. It was, yeah, it was in so the right bad. Mind. I think mm -hmm. it was just a team effort that just went just out the window, and I just don't think we were focused at game. Maybe Chris yeah, like, was thinking of his like transfer or something and he was just getting settled, but like I just don't think we had the same intensity that we had in the other games and the Olympics. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it was it was very disappointing and I at that if we're playing like that in the future games, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't qualify. I thought Wood was, or Wood, whatever, I can't even remember how to say it, but he, I, I don't even think he was good enough to be on the team after that performance. Oh, he was absolutely terrible, and I think because Marinovic was out with COVID, he was playing, but now Marinovic is back, hopefully we can keep uh, keep more goals saved and keep some clean yeah, sheets. because now that Marinovic is back from COVID, obviously, it's 
he's probably getting introduced but also now that the uzbekistan game is also cancelled it's just we haven't really had a good yeah. run of luck for our team yeah we really needed to play the uzbekistan game to test stuff before the qualifiers well we just needed like to get into rhythm we needed chemistry and we just had nothing there yeah. the midfield was also quite poor that game was, yeah it was every, everyone was quite poor in general yeah i just hope that we get back into form we get back into focus have like a high intensity high enthusiasm for our qualifiers and then hopefully we make it back into our first world cup since 2010 yeah that would that would be very good if we made it back to the world cup but yeah While you're here, Tao, what are your thoughts on Chris Wood's move to Newcastle for 25 million? Yeah, something like that. It's really, it, it's really expensive, and it was, it was absolutely amazing to see him move to Newcastle. Uh, I don't think he's worth that much, to be honest. And by his first few games, um, he was, he wasn't playing as as he should have lived up to the price range. Yeah, that's very fair. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on him since he's like. He's the main guy, like Newcastle mm -hmm. have signed True. for their attack yeah. with their new like their new bank account. Uh, yeah, so putting like a lot of pressure on Chris Wood, especially when he hasn't been up to par this season, is quite mm -hmm. an interesting it's... move from Newcastle. Yeah, it is. I mean, it was. I think. I think that one of the main reasons they signed Chris Wood was. Uh, Probably because of Burnley relegation rivals, um, I don't which was. Think, it I don't think I it think... goes that far, in my opinion, because I think mm. Burnley's already like. I think they know they could beat Burnley even if they bought a different striker. True, true, and Burnley did buy a, a new striker. I forgot yeah, his name, but. Vigorst. Mm. Who is a class signing, but if they go down to the championship, that's gonna be quite the drop. In my opinion. Yep. It will be, yeah, it will be. After Oli Sale tore his hip flexor in a loss against Sydney FC, we have found a gem in former Phoenix Academy player Alex Paulson. But as Sale was recovering, we wonder what is going to happen with the starting keeper position when he makes his inevitable return. Okay, so I think this, this situation with the goalkeepers is very interesting because it kind of happened with Marinovic as well and Sale where Sale started doing well while Marinovic was out and then Marinovic ended up moving. That's true. So, I don't really want to see that, but I want to see... I kind of want to see them kind of being equal in the play, playing. Yeah. Maybe alternate games, but like... At the end yeah. of the day, they're both there to, like, do, do their best for the club and... As much as they'll want to see each other succeed, they will still want the starting jet. They will still want to start for themselves. Yeah, that's true. And I think Danny Hay said that he would want uh, Oli Sale in the all white squad. So if that ever happens, then Paulson will have another chance, which will be good for him. Because Sale. Sale is really like, talented. He's tall, he's quick. And yeah. I think. Both the keepers are probably some of the best in the league right now. Definitely, yeah. Especially Paulson for his age. He's really, oh. like, he's got a lot of potential going into this. He's got heaps. And like, going into this situation out. as he returns, as Sal returns, he's got a lot of potential that the Phoenix might, that Tello might want to grow mm -hmm. rather than, like, keeping him on the bench or something. But at the same time, true. you want an experienced keeper who you know can do the job. And that's where Tele's yeah. decision comes in, whether he wants to specialise the, the potential or, like, guarantee, like, quality goalkeeping. Yeah, spot on. So the Phoenix have been quite active in the market this year as we have signed yet another English former Premier League centre-back and Mexican playmaker. We have of course signed Yuli Davila and Stephen Tay, I'm kidding. But no, we have signed Scott Wilson and Gail Sandoval, who appear to be the players we need to bolster the squad for the season. Tao, your thoughts on the moves? 
Um, well, so Scott Wooten, we haven't seen any of him so far with his quad injury, so we're not, I'm not going to talk about him that much. But Gail Sandoval, he's been, he's looked really good, obviously, scoring on his debut against Western United, and he looked really strong and he changed the whole team. Yeah, he's been, like, he's definitely been, like, the person who's, like, been key to, like, just getting us back on track. It was kind of sad to see him not doing as well against Melbourne Victory and, nah. and Adelaide, but... I think he's definitely someone who will like fit in with this team like Davila and like actually he'll start like producing like Davila was for us. I mean, I don't want to compare the two too much because like they are Mexican and they both came from like the same team but like they're quite different in their own kind of own ways. That's true, yeah. But I do yeah. think Sandoval is very class and I think he is definitely what we needed. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he He's in the position that we really needed uh, someone to be playing in. So I think now we've got someone like him, I think the results will come. After I said um, we shouldn't be comparing them, I kind of want to compare them now because do you think Scott Bruton and Gail Sinful will be the new Stephen Taylor and you all see Stabila. Oh, that's a that's an interesting one. Mm. I think the Phoenix Stabila was like really, really good, and I I'm not sure if Sandoval might make it there or not. But like, yeah, I think Sandoval's definitely got some potential, even though he is mid twenties. I do think he's got the potential to like boost like Davila and with Scott Booten. Mm, yeah, and they're kind of different in their they're also quite different in their own respects, like Sandoval and Davila, but like, it's very interesting as they play their own styles. And plus they both came from different yeah. Premier League clubs, so they've got different like tendencies that they got when they were younger. And True. I'm just interested to see how Scott Wilson will like fit into the squad and if he can really make that impact that we need and the impact that Taylor did make. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that is it from the Ferns Podcast January Roundup. We hope to see you guys next month for the February Roundup and how the Phoenix and All Whites will perform over the next 30 days. I'm your host, Toby, and from everyone on the team, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Peace.